it reminded us of God's power that no matter what was going to happen to our son or to us, that God's love was going to be there for us no matter what. And it reminded us that people were lifting us up in prayer. And we invite and hope people will keep on praying for us because we're going to need it as we go through the time of grief. Prayer, praying for others, prayers of intercession, praying for yourself. Prayer reminds us of God's power and presence and promise. It might not change our situation, but it reminds us of those powerful things of God. And maybe that's enough. So you gave me a P, then you gave me an A. A stands for attend. Today's gospel text has Elijah and Moses making a cameo appearance. <laughs> Jesus is basically saying to the disciples, attend to your Bible readings, to make sure you know the stories of Moses, which gets mentioned today in our first reading, or the story of Elijah, how they did powerful things in the name of God. And yet they also had some struggles in the name of God. Moses and Elijah struggled. And when you're reading your Bible, you might remember that it's not them who are so great. It's God who is great through them, who helps them even when they struggle, who helps them even in their greatness. The second reading today that Audrey read from Corinthians discounts Moses quite a bit. They say, Moses, he was nothing. He had to put a veil on. He was nothing. Pfft. We are in Christ. We don't have to wear a veil. We can be free in the spirit to say we are God's beloved people. We also have our issues and our struggles like, like Moses and Elijah. But we also are God's beloved people that we can celebrate. But attend. Attend to the Bible. Attend to the reading of scripture. Come to Sunday school. Go to Bible studies. Attend to God's word. P-A-N. Invite. Okay, invite doesn't start with an N, does it? But it sounds like it could. Invite. Jesus said, I'm going to face some tough stuff. So he invited two or three of his closest friends to pray with him. Peter, John, and James. Who are your closest friends that you can pray with? Who are your closest friends that you can invite to pray for you when you need prayer? Who are your closest friends that you can invite to church or even to a Shrove Tuesday pancake supper? Invite others into your life of faith. Invite people to pray for you. Invite two or three to gather because where two or three are gathered, Christ is present. Invite others to church. Maybe if that's too strong, invite others to pray for you or to pray with you and to huddle up. Huddle up in a small group. And then T. T. What was that word that the children sang about a while ago in their first song? Transform. When you pray, when you attend, when you invite, and, and when you're in a huddle with others, you are transformed. Transformed by God, for God. Transformed. It also reminds us of the big T up on, here on our wall that's very visible and the invisible T on our foreheads and on our hearts that we are marked with the cross of Christ and sealed by the Holy Spirit forever. You are transformed for Christ's sake. Live that way and be reminded of that transformation each and every Sunday when you come and dip a finger in the baptismal water. And then, after, what is it, P-A-N-T, we have H, H-E-R-S, hers, hers. H-E-R-S also has some connections H, they head down the mountain after transfiguration. They head out to go help other people. H might stand for help. E might stand for encourage. Help other people by your encouraging of others. We live in a discouraging world. The world is discouraged. I was reading an article about it this week and talking about how discouraged we get and how discouraged people are, discouraging people are to other people. Even in the church, people discourage others. And it said we need more people to encourage other people in life and in faith. Live a life of encouragement. Who can you encourage this week? Who can you send a note card to to encourage them? Who can you reach out and shake a hand and have lunch with and encourage them in their life? Be an encourager. It's one way we help. And then the R, reach out. 
And then the S of the last letter of Panthers, serve. Serve all people following the example of Jesus. H-E-R-S, help, encourage, reach out, serve. The gospel text today ended with a story on the next day. How people saw the greatness of God was on the next day because there were some people that were helping. There were some people that were encouraging. There were some people that were reaching out and serving. H-E-R-S. Help, encourage, reach out, serve. A man had a sick son. He cries out to Jesus, help, help me. Yesterday, some of us were in attendance at St. Andrew's Lutheran Church for a funeral for the wife of the pastor at St. Andrew's, Pastor Dick Fritz's wife, Cecilia, died suddenly in her sleep on Wednesday morning. Bishop Tim Smith came over and preached yesterday afternoon, and his sermon was based on Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills, and is fearful when looks, looking up to the hills because there's maybe an army coming down from the hills. And then the psalmist says, where will my help come? Who's going to help me? Who's going to help me? And then Bishop Smith, and eventually he said, who can help Pastor Fritz and his family during this time of grief? Raise your hand if you'll call Pastor Fritz this week. Raise your hand if you'll send him a card. Raise your hand if you'll keep his family in prayer. Bishop Smith, in the middle of the funeral sermon, had us raising our hands. <laughs> Part of our Christian duty and responsibility, like the gospel story today, is to help others. And the story concluded by saying, Jesus did what? Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. Jesus healed the boy, and Jesus gave the boy back to his father. Jesus rebuked, Jesus healed, Jesus gave the boy back to his father. Jesus does the same thing for me every week, and maybe for you too. Jesus rebukes my sinfulness, my anger, my selfishness, my envy. Jesus heals me in the waters of baptism, forgives me, transforms me, and restores me again, even today, to this right relationship I have with my Father God. And Jesus does the same thing for you. Jesus has rebuked the demons, the sins, the temptations around us. Jesus has healed us, forgiven us, renewed us, and Jesus has restored us, given us back to the Father through his transforming cross, through his transforming love, through his amazing grace, so that we can be astounded by the greatness of God and so that we can go forth and let others see the greatness of God through us. So this week, go Panthers, pray, attend, invite, be transformed in the waters of baptism with that cross on your forehead. Help, encourage, reach out, serve. Amen. Oh, wait, wait, be transformed, come here, acolytes, crucifers, communion assistants, come here transformed to be changed to reveal we talked about revealing in sunday school today the epiphany revealing what's underneath your robe can you pull this back can you pull that back reveal to people what's your hey okay they all have on panther stuff and today's and today's psalm today's psalm says when you see the number one today on the football field today's psalm remember this if you don't think about it <laughs> Anyway, think about number one. Psalm today three times says, God is the Holy One. Not Cam, not Peyton. God is the Holy One.
Let us profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of Rejoicing with all the faithful, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need, kneeling as we are able. God of glory, guide and empower your church's leaders to trust your promises as Moses and Elijah did. Shine the light of Christ through your church to the world. Lord, in your mercy. God of majesty, from the highest mountain to the lowest valley, your power is seen in your creation. Help us to protect and care for soil, air, water, and all the creatures you have made. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope and freedom, give just laws, fair leaders, sufficient food, water, and shelter, and abundant peace to all nations in poverty, strife, or at war. Lord, in your mercy. God of wholeness, bring clarity to those in confusing times, healing to those in painful times, and peace to those in trying times. This day we pray especially for those listed in our bulletins and anyone who we speak now aloud or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of new life, show us your will for the ministries in this place and transform us for mission and witness. Lord, in your mercy. God of glory, we give thanks for all the beloved who rest in your loving arms. Keep us from losing heart and strengthen our faith in your promise of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all of your beloved for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all.
us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. 